speaking with Mr. Josh Wolf, who just did a set at Comics at Foxwoods. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was great. A, a really great crowd here. Yeah, they were they were a lot of fun. The weird, two weirdest bachelor and bachelorette parties I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> ha, the, it was the non rowdiest bachelorette party because usually they're all ah! and they get right, like right. cock whistles and all that stuff. <laughs> sure. And the bachelor party, like I, there's never a bachelor party because dudes go to strip clubs. You're going to be doing some big shows soon. And it's for the comedians Chelsea Lately and me and Chris and Lonnie. It's a fantastic lineup. Cool. I'm excited just to go up there. The same thing with being with Jen Kirkman. Like, you just relax because you know the show's good and sure. you don't got to work that hard. And yeah, it's going to be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. And you'll be back in Boston in May for the kicking off the Lies Chelsea Told Me. Yeah, May 10th. Yeah. And we go that whole week. If you ask me what the next city is, I couldn't tell you. Right. right. I think maybe Denver and Chicago. Like I think, yeah, Chicago, then Denver. You're just yeah, something like stabbing that. Stabbing westward. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't even. At this point, I just go to where they tell me, and then where the plane lands, I, I know we'll have a show there that night. So what do you, how do you change, you know, the, we're at a comedy club, you just did a comedy club mm -hmm. set. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit more intimate, you're closer, whereas, you know, you're, I know for the, for the lies Chelsea, Chelsea told me, uh, tour, you're starting out at an arena, uh -huh. you know, there are these huge events, you know, what do you, what kind of adjustments do you make as a comedian? Uh... You know, some people don't make any, and that's perfectly fine. Like, I don't know that you have to make adjustments, I guess. Is it, I, I mean, find that I stalk the stage a lot more. Mm -hmm. I use, whatever stage you give me, I usually use all of it. Cool, cool. So if it's a small stage, and that'll depend on what jokes I do, too. Because some jokes work much better in an arena than they do in a club because the physicality of it uh, works. And then when I'm on stage, like the, one of these smaller stages, you can't be too physical, and it just doesn't seem to land as well. Do you feel like you have to give the joke a little time to percolate out sometimes? Uh, to, for for, that to for happen, the response? For response and that kind of thing? Or? I think you just, well, everybody hears it at the same time because of speakers, but sometimes you get laughter and wave. Yeah. Uh, but you just got to, after that first one, you just got to kind of figure it out. Like I did a show in front of 50, 53,000 people. Oh, my God. Uh, which was the biggest comedy show ever. It was me, uh, a guy named Reno Collier, and Larry, Larry the Cable Guy. Okay, okay, cool. And um, the laughter rolled in. So you would, everyone was hearing the joke at the same time, but you would start your, your next joke, and then the laughter from <laughs> way back finally oh hits you. So during your setup, you're getting another wave of laughter. It was intense. Oh my God. It was intense. That's weird. It was fantastic. Are you kidding? For 10 minutes, with people screaming, 53,000, you felt a, a sliver of what a rock star feels like. Sure. And, and now you know why they won't give it up. Right, yeah. Now you know going. why Mick Jagger is 74 and we're like, one more tour. Because sure. it's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about this year and what could possibly happen. And working at Chelsea now, you know, I didn't work there for a while. Right, right. Working there now has been fantastic. and. You know, the opportunity to come and play at places like this, to come back east and see. Like, my high school friends were here last night. Mm -hmm. It was crazy because they all looked old. You guys <laughs> <laughs> need to get your shit together. Uh, <laughs> like, dude, well, you don't look like you anymore. You look like the guy who ate you. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but uh, it was really, uh, it's been fantastic. Everywhere, like, that's the best part for me about traveling is that I, you know, between my college friends and my high school friends, I really get to see people that I, and family, that I would never see. Sure. It's really, that and Facebook has kept me in touch with everybody, except Facebook. Is like, Some people that maybe you didn't want to keep in touch with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know who you are. Stop poking me. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, I don't even know why you do it. Did the finale uh, for your Fuel show just air? Uh, no, um, I leave here tomorrow to fly to Houston. That's why I'm watching the, I'm talking to you and watching sure. the game at the same time. Sure. Um, and we do our show from the floor of the Final Four. Oh my God. On Monday. Oh my God. Wow. That has been. That's my favorite thing to do. That Fuel show. Sure. Is my favorite thing to do because I'm a sports junkie. Mm -hmm. I like making fun of people, and I love comedy. 
So it's like a, I get to do all three of those things and get paid for it. It's like, that's, that's the ideal job. And every day I'm there, that's just like, it's fantastic. Watch the show. Fuel TV. Midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific. All right, sorry. Is there a season to that? I mean, when does that We end? start in, uh, we start like a week before college football. Okay. And then we go through April, generally. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do one show a month through the summer. Okay. Because there's not, nobody watches college baseball. Not even people who play college baseball watch college baseball. Sure. And then uh, we'll pick up again for when football season starts. You know, it started out as a web show. Right. Yeah. And then somebody picked it up. So uh, we're, we're moving. Up. We're moving forward. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to start adding... Um, because Fuel really wants to hit the college age kids. So we're going to start adding some more college humor. Okay. So, uh... What are, do you know what that means? I, I, I am assuming <laughs> it's in the jackassy Tosh area. Right, right. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We'll put our own little twist on it. Flying dildos. I hope so. That's, like that's, that. I already wrote a note about that, so... <laughs> You're reading my mind. Can you tell, tell us about some other things you have going on? Well, uh, my, uh, writing a movie for Adam Sandler. Oh, wow. That's, that's cool. Very cool. Um, it's a, based on a true story about a group of, in 1963, about a group of 13-year-old kids who um, were on a traveling all, baseball all-star team. And their coach used the team as cover to rob a bank in every town they went into. Oh, my God. True story. And that's then great. the lead detective for the case, his son played shortstop for the team wow. so he was standing next to the guy that he's supposed to arrest every day seven kids off of that team went on to play major league baseball wow how about that the bat boy who never played wasn't good enough to play was robin yount so there's a lot of it's like catch me if you can and bad news bears because he robbed the banks um but he used the money to allow the kids to travel it was kind of a Robin Hoodie feel good. It's a very cool story. That's cool. And I'm not just saying that because I wanted to get made. Sure. But sure. I am basically saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Combine Bad News Bears with Catch Me If You Can, which is kind of a weird. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a thing about the guy, the detective, who is getting so close to catching the guy because he's standing next to him all the time. Sure. And then this, you know, man who turns these kids around into champions. Great story. And he's a criminal. <laughs> but he's a criminal. He's a criminal with a heart, like a hooker with a heart of gold. Yeah, people love it. People love hooker with a heart of gold. We already handed in the first draft. We got notes. Hand a second draft. Waiting on notes. That's great. Hoping they keep us on the script. Well, I hope, <laughs> I hope to be able to go to the premiere. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't hear what he said. <laughs> this is a mystery to, I think, a, a lot of people. But how, how does it work out, like rotation into the the roundtable panel on on the show? Um. Oh, oh yeah. So, here is your You're the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, sweet potato fry. The rotation is right now pretty much closed. Okay. She knows who she likes, sure. and those people rotate. Okay. It used to be a much bigger pool, yeah. and it's been whittled down. So you basically see the same, I'll probably say 40 people, 30 people. That's somewhere. still a big number. Mm -hmm. When Carson used to have a a comic con or letterman used to have a comic con that would sell tickets in clubs yeah doesn't do anything now i mean sorry jay but it doesn't like <laughs> if you go on car if you go on leno it doesn't boost sales for your you go on chelsea it, because your personality like do you know they start to know you you're on there a couple times they're new and they'll come out and see you and she has the best fans in the world like the people that come out, these people that saw us tonight, the best. I mean, the best. People who aren't on the show, comics, um, you can tell, like the numbers, you ask the people in the clubs, who sells tickets is the Chelsea Lately comics. They're, it, it, because the fans are rabid and, and the best. Loyal, faithful. It's like country music fans. The best. It's just unbelievable fans. A lot of good looking women come out of the show. Do they? Jeez. <laughs> That's, yes, I, I, I'll concur from what I saw. <laughs> I will agree with Mr. Josh Wolf excellent, excellent. about the audience. Well, hey, thank you so much for talking with us. Absolutely, man. Best of luck thank you so with much. that movie. And, You'll be and, at the premiere. I'll see you there. And looking forward to seeing more of you on Fuel and especially, of course, uh, Chelsea Lately. And After Lately will be coming up on After Lately. Are you going to be on After Lately too? Yeah, I'm on the last four episodes. Oh.
You, you have to be a writer. Okay. And I wasn't a writer when it started, and then I joined on mid-season. I like that show a lot. Funny. And I don't know, I mean, I, I, I write about both, and there's like this little war with people, and they're like, it's... It seems scripted. Well, like, that's the point. Um, you know? <laughs> it is scripted. You know, that's it's the... not a reality show. Exactly. It's a scripted show. It's a mockumentary kind of... It's, it's scripted. There's a lot of improv, but it is scripted. Like, when you walk into a scene, you go, this is what has to happen. So, if people don't, don't think, it's, what, they think it's a reality people, show? Some people, seriously, they don't get it. And I, I think that... I wouldn't say that's the... You know, that's a... Scripted. <laughs> it's a scripted show. It's a half-hour sitcom. Scripted. You know what else is scripted? The Kardashians. Exactly. Scripted. Yeah. You know what else is scripted? Real world. Scripted. They're all scripted. There's no such thing as real reality. Because they need to make a story. You think everybody's life every day is a story from a beginning, middle, end? Every one of those episodes of all the reality shows have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Because the writers have to... Or else you wouldn't watch it. Or else it would just be this. Me sitting on a couch. This is reality. <laughs> right. You're going to watch this? You went to the bathroom, right. and then you came back. Yeah, that's real. tired. That's not scripted. <laughs> <laughs> Keep watching both shows. Awesome. And fuel. Great. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Mr. Wolf. I appreciate and it very much. They were a lot of fun. The we're two weirdest bachelor and bachelorette parties I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, the, it was the non-rowdiest bachelorette party because usually they're all, ah! and they got right, like right. cock whistles and all that stuff. <laughs> sure. And the bachelor party, like I, there's never a bachelor party because dudes go to strip clubs. You're going to be doing some big show soon. And it's for the comedians, Chelsea. Speaking with Mr. Josh Wolf, who just did a set at Comics at Foxwoods. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was great. A, a really great crowd here. Yeah, they were asked me what the next city is. I couldn't tell you. Right. I right. think maybe Denver and Chicago. Something like that. I think, yeah, Chicago, then Denver. You're just yeah, something like stabbing that. Stabbing westward. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't even, at this point, I just go to where they tell me, and then where the plane lands, I, I know we'll have a show there that night. So what do you, how do you change, you know, the, we're at a comedy club, you just did a comedy club mm -hmm. set. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit more intimate, you're closer, whereas, you know, you're, I know for the, for the lies Chelsea, Chelsea told me, uh, tour, you're starting out at an arena, uh -huh. you know, there are these huge events, you know, what do you, what kind of adjustments do you make as a comedian? Uh, you know, some people don't make any, and that's perfectly fine, like, I don't know that Evie Lely and me and Chris and Lonnie, it's a fantastic lineup. Cool. I'm excited just to go up there. The same thing with being with Jen Kirkman, like, you just relax because you know the show's good and sure. you don't got to work that hard. And Yeah, it's going to be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. And you'll be back in Boston in May for the kicking off the lies Chelsea told me. Yeah, May 10th. Yeah. And we go that whole week. If you...